simply put, we don't listen to what God says. If we don't know who we are, how are we going to follow what our God says to do? That's our problem. We're hard-headed and disobedient. We'll listen to anything the white man put out there and say to us, but when it comes to us and our God, we don't listen. We got people out here saying I'm mixed. The Bible says you uh, carry the seed of your father. There's no such thing as mixed. We, we got uh, my brother right here wearing the star. He said, this is about the Israelites, but you didn't even call yourself an Israelite when I asked you your nationality. You see what I'm saying? So that becomes an astonishment how lost we are. You understand? And then we try to stand up and say, black unity this, black. But meanwhile, our enemies back there in the fatness of the earth laughing at us. Laughing at us because they saying you can't prove nothing you saying. That's how we have operated. But get Revelation 1 and 3. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Uh-huh. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is the man, woman, child of Israel that will read the Bible, read their history, be able to identify themselves in the book and see what their responsibilities are. Because as a community, we have been letting go of our responsibility to ourselves, to our God, and to one another. That's what's wrong with our community. Read on. Blessed is he that readeth, uh -huh. and they that hear the words of this prophecy. So guess what? Right now, you're getting the understanding that has been stolen away from you in slavery. Blessed are you that are hearing. Maybe you can't read it with the right understanding. But God says you're blessed by just listening to the correct understanding that is about you in the Bible. Everybody understand that? So, first thing, as y'all walking up, as you're walking up, got brother, sister, family here, look on this sign and identify yourself. On this side of the sign is what your oppressors have called you and you continue to call yourself even till this day. But this is what you were called from the beginning. When you were formed and created as a nation, this is what God called you. Which one? I'm a, I'm a, who ready? Who ready? What's your national? What's your what's your tribe? Judah. Judah. What's your tribe, sis? Huh? I want, I want, okay. I want to know how you how you identify yourself. How do you know which? Hey, all crazy. We gonna get to that. Uh, what I want you to do first. Bear with me, cause it's a lot of people here, right? I got. That's a good question, right? How do we know that we are these people? Okay. Now identify yourself first. Okay, so you would Judah, right? I mean that's what it says. That's what it said. Yeah, All right, good. Read. Oh, go ahead. Judah, what about you? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, not sure? Okay. Just, um, who's your father? What is your father? You don't know him. Okay. All right. Good. That, that's a problem in our community that we're gonna deal with. What nationality are you? This is what we were made as slaves here in America. On this side is what God called us. We Cherokee, so you will be the tribe of Gad. Here we go, what you say? Judah, Judah what you say? Judah. All right, so now we're going to start dealing with how to identify that these are the real people of the book, right? Now, let's go to uh, Jeremiah 14 and 2. Because what a lot of our people don't realize is color is actually in the Bible. For a long time, our people have been thinking, the Bible is a white man's book. Raise your hand if you heard that before. The Bible is a white man's book. All right. So we're going to deal with that very strategically. Because guess what? We read the Bible to see what it's talking about. So watch this. Read. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Uh -huh. Judah mourning. Judah is in mourning. And it's going to explain why they are mourning as a people. Read. And the gates thereof language. The gates, their leaders, are slack. 
Only in the black, Hispanic, and Native American community do we have leaders who are entertainers. Right. Y'all understand that? No. So when it comes to them making a rational decision for their people, and a paycheck is on the table, they're not going to do it. We've seen it with Nick Cannon. Right. He started calling himself an Israelite. He started apologizing to the same people that oppressed us. Matter of fact, they messed up his money. They messed up his show. Kyrie Irving. Who else? Uh, who else that called themselves the Israelite Jackson. had their money messed up? Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson, yes. Got a lot of entertainers who are now saying, I apologize for actually causing this stir up. Because guess what? They actually were speaking truth to us. But because they are put in the place of being a leader and that paycheck is on the table, they can't really stand up for us at all. You see your leaders right here on the street corner, right now, waking up the people, teaching them fervently. You understand that? So, we you know, they are black. They, Judah, the people, they are what? They are black. Read. They are black. Go ahead. Unto the ground. Unto the ground. When you look at the dirt on the ground, what color is the dirt on the ground? Huh? Somebody answer me, because they, we, they said color is not in the Bible. It's all, huh? it's all color. It's all color. But the deeper you dig, what, does it get lighter? No. Oh, okay, so the Bible says that Judah, the people, one of these tribes of Israel, all of these tribes, really, they are black unto the ground. The deeper you dig, the darker it gets. That's color in the Bible. But let's see where they got that from. What color was Adam? Does anybody know? Huh? The first man was black. Okay, now let's see how they were able to rationalize him being black. Genesis 2 and 7. Let's get that. Because we're reading the Bible. Read. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Uh-huh. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. This is Adam, and it said, God formed this man of the dust of the what? Of the ground. Of the ground. We just said the ground is brown, all colors, but the deeper you dig, the darker it gets. So we're reading the Bible. Now, let's go to Exodus 2 and 17 because they said no, matter of fact, I want something more plain than Exodus 2 and 17. Give me uh, Song of Solomon 1 and 5 because for a long time they've been saying it's a white man's book, right? That was one of your issues coming up. You was like, man, I believe that every man, that y'all reading out of a white man's book. So if this was a white man's book, why would one of the kings of this nation call himself to look like this? Read. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Uh -huh. I am black. Solomon, David's son. They, they say that that six-point star is the star of David, right? David, a king of Israel, his son Solomon says, I am black and but comely. But comely. Don't we say in our neighborhoods, we're black and beautiful? Yeah. Where did they get that from? The Bible. They brought this image, white Jesus, when the same time they were whipping our backs, tearing up our families, ruining our households, ruining our mindset. You understand that? Yeah. But all we got to do, the Bible said, blessed is he that does what? Read. Read. We got to read as a people. And if you have a hard time reading, guess what? There are people who are equipped to teach you. Those are your real leaders. We got to stop thinking individually. We got to go to the people who have wisdom. Wisdom not according to themselves, but to God. You understand? My brother right here. Come back for a second, because I want to show you this. You coming back? What's this? You can stay over here. He coming back to get you. He ain't going to leave you. All right? So what? read this. Read. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 10. Uh-huh. Our skin was black like an oven. Our skin was black. Now, I, ain't, I gotta get with that, uh... I'll be right back. Nah, let me deal with this, uh, Star Molet, because this is, uh, one of those doctrines. Get that in Acts. I think that's Acts 7 and 26. So, uh, show everybody that, that necklace, because this is, uh, 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 a stronghold within our community. They think that the Israelites or codified or symbolized with the six-point star. Do you understand that that is idolatry? And a part of our laws, our God-given laws, is that we do not give our power over to other idols or gods. You understand that? So watch this, Acts 7 and uh, 26. Is that what I want? No, 23. 23? 23. 43. 43, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Acts 
chapter 7, verse 43. Uh -huh. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch. Moloch is another god that a lot of our people are following. This is one of them gods where abortions, uh, abortions as we know it now, this is one of those gods where our people were setting, they were birthing children and actually putting them on altars to be sacrificed. But we now call it abortions. Y'all understand that? So guess what? We're still serving those same gods, but we don't recognize it. Y'all understand that? The, we got abortion clinics all in our neighborhoods. You understand that? But it roots from that ideology of the uh, god Moloch. Y'all understand that? Our god says be fruitful and multiply. But we're the only nation. Other, other nationalities and races have hard times bringing forth children. We bring forth children out of wedlock, all out of order, and we the ones killing our own children. So we're committing murder within our own community. But that's the doctrine that comes behind that symbol. You understand that? Read. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, uh -huh. and the star of your god Remphan. And the star of your god Remphan. You understand that? These are the things that we've taken in our, uh, inside, inside our spirits. Go to Deuteronomy 28. I want to show y'all something. Because have y'all ever heard of we deal with generational curses? Yeah. Now, how many of y'all from Columbia? From the area of Columbia? All right. So where y'all from? Let me ask you. Sandy Run. Sandy Run. Out there in the country. Uh, St. Matthew, right? That area. Where y'all from? I'm from Jasper County. Jasper County. Down there. A lot of crime and violence going on down there in Jasper County. Where you from, bro? Northeast Columbia. Now guess what? Even though we as a people come from different places around the state, we got the same crime, victimization, oppression going on. But why is that? Deuteronomy 28, 15. Deuteronomy Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Mata Milia is the twelve. Chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Simply put, we don't listen to what God says. If we don't know who we are, how are we going to follow what our God says to do? That's our problem. We're hard headed and disobedient. We'll listen to anything the white man put out there and say to us, but when it comes to us and our God, we don't listen. We don't. But what, what's going to happen when we do that? Read. To observe to do all his commandments. God made us royalty when we kept his commandments. But when we didn't keep his commandments, what happened? And his statutes, which I command thee, this, thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Get verse 46. Curses, are curses a good thing or a bad thing? Help me out. Huh? Oh, okay. So if I curse you out, if I curse you out, is it a good thing or a bad thing? However you take it. All right, bro. I'll, 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 I'll keep it real. I want to ask one. I want to ask one thing. Okay. All right, and we let me get to it. Let me get. To it. I got a slide though. I really got a slide. I know. Slide. Uh, give me two minutes. All right, bro. You you'll keep it real with me, right? If okay. I cuss you out, what's gonna happen? It, it's gonna be a bad <laughs> situation, right? So why is it when we start looking at our situation and we talk about curses, we're like, well, it's whatever you make it. You want to know why it's whatever we make it? Because it's whatever he'll tell us in a lie. Bring it up. And we believe lies all day in, day out. Now watch this. Read verse 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. Uh-huh. And they shall be upon thee. So everybody pay attention real quick. We were just talking about curses. The Bible says these same curses will be a sign and a a sign and for a wonder. So when you want to identify the children of Israel, look to the Bible for these curses and they will identify the children of Israel. If you ever wonder why your people are in the conditions that they're in, look to the Bible. The Bible will explain 
through their disobedience, they became slaves. Now, watch this. Before y'all leave, my sister and my brother right here, before y'all leave, how did black people get to America? I gotta ask that question. Transatlantic slave trade. What was the mode of transportation in the transatlantic slave trade? A boat. Now, does anybody know whether that's in the Bible or not? Huh? You read it in the social studies book. Guess what? Every social studies book on the face of the planet has to reference the Bible to actually be true. That's right. You understand that? So why? Oh, 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 oh. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Because you just said transatlantic slave trade. It's in the Bible. Read that. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So hold on. Wait a minute. Come over here for a second. Come over here for a second. The Bible is talking to the children of Israel. Now watch this. Y'all got to be some special people because if we allow two Mountain Dew trucks to take us away from our history and to take us away from our identity and purpose, how, how much more easier is it to destroy a people? It, it is that easy. Soon as a little distraction comes about, and guess what? Our enemies know that. Little distraction. Right. So watch this. Because I'm going to deal with that cigarette too. Because guess what? Dealing with the situations that we have here in America, we always looking for something to cope. But read that again. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt is a place of bondage. The Israelites were in bondage in Egypt. So God says, I'm going to send you into Egypt again, a place of bondage or slavery. How? With ships. Who came into America on slave ships? Us. Us. We don't. Again, with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Uh -huh. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. So the Israelites will be brought into slavery again with ships. Then in this new land, you would never learn about your real homeland. You wouldn't even go back to it. So we're thinking Africa is our homeland. Africa is a continent. But Israel is a country in Africa, Northeast Africa. When we ask nationality, that's what we're actually asking you. What country is your origin? Where do you come from? Who are your people there? You understand that? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.